Everything set up? Am I good? Okay. First of all, my name is Adam Schaefer. I'm a senior at Newton North High School, and I'm in senior year project. And this is my presentation. It's entitled From Entertainment to Education. So, in the late 1930s, televisions became commercially available. And over the past 50 years, DVDs, video cassettes, and the internet have resulted in the mass usage of televised material for educational and entertainment purposes. We watch the news, we watch TV shows, movies, documentaries, instructional videos, the list goes on. None of this would matter though if it weren't for the enormous usage of television. Here are some statistics that I want you guys to keep in mind for the rest of the presentation. According to the AC Nielsen Company, the average American watches more than four hours of television each day. 99% of all households in America own at least one television, and 66% own three or more. 56% of Americans pay for cable television. That means that more than half of the American public is paying to have televised entertainment in their homes. With advertisements, paid programming, and television setups, the money keeps adding up. The same study found some very interesting statistics about children. The study found that compared to the 1,680 minutes the average child watches television, they spend about 1 500th of that having meaningful conversations with their parents. It also found that children watch 1,500 hours of television per year compared to the 900 they spend in school. That means that children are exposed to more ideas, more facts, more opinions while watching television than they do in school. With statistics like these, it, it's, it's almost impossible for any adolescent to avoid the influence of television. Watching TV has become just as necessary as learning how to read and write. Television has become a cultural necessity. The picture in front of you describes literacy needed in the informational field to be up to date with today's culture. One needs to be tech savvy, literate in English, and able to interpret news in the present cultural fashion. With all of these parts of the American culture mastered, only then can, can one be considered socially up to date. And in a world where one has to know the current trends in order to get a job and lead a social life, it is more important that you are in the know of things than ever. This leads to a staple in my research. During my research, I came across a very interesting description of the importance of information in Asa Briggs and Peter Burke's book, A Social History of the Media. The importance of information was described as a sacred trinity of education, entertainment, and information. Education being the learning of necessary things like writing, reading, and ethics. Entertainment being what one does for relaxation or pleasure. And information being the compiling of known facts and ideas. I found this to be the idea that brought together my theory of education through entertainment. In our society, entertainment, education, and information are not three different things. Just as the three branches of the government are controlled by checks and balances, so are the three parts of the sacred trinity. If one gets too powerful and starts to dwarf the others, there are things that can be done to prevent it from happening again. However, if one is not doing its job, then another can become more powerful and possibly unstoppable. So what happens when one part is not doing its job? When children are spending more time watching television than they do learning in school, where are they getting their education from? What will stop television from becoming more important than school or becoming a new form of school altogether? The integration of television in education is a vast topic, spanning from scientific exploration to fashionable clothes. I decided to focus on a topic that is rather important to me, as myself and my peers are the very subject of my research. I researched the topic of sex in teenagers. Sex is a very large part uh, is a very important part of a teenager's life. It starts on the most basic level of human existence with the need to reproduce. Hormones control so much of a teenager's brain and there's nothing that any of us can do about it. After that, we have sexual education in school, sexual content in movies and television, and sexual activity in day-to-day -day life. When I started my research, I thought I was going to research the science of attraction. I deducted that in order to find why teenagers are attracted to sex in the media, I first had to find why teenagers are attracted to each other. I found that this information led to a dead end in my research. This dead end, however, led to narrowing of my scope. I didn't need to find the why of sex, I need to find the what, as in what causes us to form ideas about sex. 
in relation to the media in my case. So I ventured elsewhere to the realm of advertising and commercialism. The comic reads, news item, according to recent surveys, most Americans favor comprehensive sex education. The person in the picture is reading a magazine, watching television, and is on his computer. Basically, Americans would rather watch sex on TV, read about it in magazines, and read about it on the internet than learn about it in school. But this so-called sexual education is not the sex ed that we learn in school. It is sexual content in television shows, celebrity gossip in magazines, and possible pornography on the internet. With so many sources to find so much information, how is one to filter what is opinion and what is fact? In the modern school system, there is very little sexual education. In middle school, we are taught about basic human anatomy. Then we take a sexual education class for one semester our freshman year of high school. From kindergarten to graduation, this is all we are taught. And in these classes, we are taught about safe sex, acceptance of others, and life choices. Compared to the average 20,000 hours of television we watch by the time we graduate, sexual education barely makes a scratch. And in a capitalist society, aren't we supposed to follow the largest provider? In this case, television beats school. There are even more influences that cause teenagers to care less about school and more about television. In his book, Freaks, Geeks, and Cool Kids, Larry Miller says, teenagers are sent off to school five days a week, sorted by age, and supervised by a few teachers. Clearly, this, is to, this will decrease the significance of adults. We as kids are not treated as individuals, but as units, all the same. The school system's disinterest in us causes us not to be interested in what we are told. Televisions, on the other hand, treat us as if we are the only people watching it. We can choose what we watch, when we watch it, and through what medium we watch it. There are so many choices, it can sometimes be overwhelming. This plethora of choices in TV is an obvious pick over the monotony of the school system. In a study I did of students at Newton North High School, I came to the same conclusion. When asked, did you find sexual education freshman year to be helpful, out of 25 students, 19 said yes, 5 said no, and 1 said they can't remember what they learned in the class. As a follow-up question, I asked if there was anything they could change about the sexual education course at Newton North, what would it be? I got many answers to this question. Uh, Many answered, because they had to learn in a classroom with no windows and equipment that didn't work, it hindered their learning. One said, and I quote, don't put it in some creepy room with no corners, don't put it in some creepy corner with no windows or working equipment, because that just creates m way more tension than there already is. Another said that the visual media used to teach, this includes educational movies and material, was out of date and therefore harder to relate to. Another said they liked the class, however, because their teacher had conversations with them. And this was the first time they actually talked with and not to. My third question was, do you think that as an incoming freshman, you would have taken sexual education if it was not mandatory? 15 said they would take it, 10 said they would not. When asked why they would take it, one answered, it sucks to have to try and find a bearable gym class when every year there's a dwindling choice for them. A Newton North sex ed counts as a gym class. The only reason that they would take it, having prior knowledge about the credit system. When asked why they would not take sex ed, one said, and I quote, all they taught you is safe sex and where to find a vagina. My parents yell at me about condoms already, and I knew what a vagina was by the time I was a freshman in high school. I don't need teachers telling me what to do. I asked one more question. If there was no sexual education in Newton North High School, where else could you find helpful information? Would it be hard to find this information? All 25 mentioned the internet. 20 mentioned television, and only seven mentioned their parents. The ones who did mention their parents, however, said that they would rather not, as it could be awkward and they may receive unwanted information. After this, I did a search on the internet for three items, sex, safe sex, and human anatomy. All three came up with information on the first link, except for sex, which came up with a pornography link. From this information, I found that sex ed in high school was out of date and thought to be a waste of time among most teenagers at Newton North. To widen my search just a little, I asked a friend who, goes to, who lives in Carmel, Indiana. I asked him the same question, and I received an answer that surprised me and scared me. When I asked, do you think as an incoming freshman you would ta have taken sexual education, if not mandatory? He answered, I didn't have to take sex ed. I took interpersonal relations, which incorporates that. The school doesn't have a single course devoted to sex ed. I was not expecting this answer at all. I had thought, going into my research, that all schools had sexual education courses. But to know that some schools don't have it at all, 
It only adds to my theory that we're getting information regarding sex from the wrong places. I interviewed a clinical th therapist who dealt with outpatient surgery uh, therapy with adolescents and young adults. She's been in the field of mental health with teenagers since 2003. The main focal point of the interview was the influence of television on teenagers' ideals of sex. We discussed teenagers in, teenagers in a town like Newton. She said that the intense need to fit in affected teenagers greatly. They have a need to be accepted, and if they are not, if they, are not they do what they can to try and fit in. One such thing she mentioned was the way television affected is, the, is how, how television has affected the female perception of looking like a model. Being skinny has become a method of deciding attractiveness among teenagers. She talked about the show Gossip Girl. In this show, teenagers drink, have sex, and do so openly. They act like adults. So teenagers will see this attitude and try to emulate it, seeing that they're more mature, so that means they must be right. This desensitizing or normalization of sex has caused it to be just another thing that kids do rather than a special act that must be thought about before doing. What teenagers see on television and in movies cannot be erased once seen. After discussing television's effects on teenagers, we discussed the ideals of sex as a country. She said that our society should have more cultural openness to sex as opposed to hiding it. Pretending that it doesn't exist will not help the problem, and just because we know about it doesn't mean we will do it. Another problem she mentioned is that teenagers are getting themselves into situations they don't have the emotional security for. They don't understand that if one is to have sex, they must be prepared for parenthood, even with protected sex. She says, young people don't grasp the magnitude of these consequences. She also noted that teenagers are not usually thinking about sex their first couple years of high school as much as their later years. To only teach sexual education early on can be ineffective and irrelevant to a teenager's life. She said that the school system should integrate sexual education throughout the four years of high school. Research shows that the rate that the, the teenage sex is not increased by sexual education, but safety is. And although teenagers may, may not be less sexually active, their knowledge of safety and the consequences of having sex will be fresh in their mind and in the back of their heads. Both the interview with the professional and the survey with my fellow students helped me to prove my point. But I wanted to do another type of test. I found an episode of a popular television show that very plainly had to do with sex. I asked them three questions. What parts of the show do you remember most? Did you find the parts about sex to be educational, entertaining, or other? And do you find the situations in the episode to be realistic? I had them watch the episode on their own and report back to me. The episode was from the show Seinfeld, and the episode was called The Contest. This is the opening clip. Sorry. It's not funny, Elaine. I know, I'm fine. Come back when 
much. She's got to be there for a couple of days. All she said on the way over in the car was, why, George, why? I said, because it's there. <laughs> Glamour? <laughs> I am never doing that again. What? You mean in your mother's house or all together? All together. Oh, oh give yeah. me up, Ray. Right. Right. <laughs> well, you don't think I can? No chance. You think you could? Well, I know I can hold out longer than you. Care to make it interesting? <laughs> sure, how much? Hundred dollars? You're on. Wait a second, wait a second. Count me in on this. <laughs> you? Yeah, you'll be out before we get the check. I'm going to be in on this too. Oh, oh no, no. no. Oh, no. Why? Oh, why? 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 Because you're a woman. So what? It's easier for a woman not to do it than a man. Oh. We have to do it. It's part of our lifestyle. <laughs> it's like uh, shaving. Oh, that is such baloney. I shave my legs. Not every day. <laughs> right, look, you want to be in? Yeah. You got to give us odds. At least two to one. You got to put up two hundred dollars. No, a thousand. <laughs> now I'll I'll put up one fifty. All right, you're in for one fifty. Okay. One, all right. Now, how are we gonna monitor this? Thing? Well, obviously we all know each other very well. I'm sure we'll all feel comfortable within the confines of the honor system. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I had ten of my fellow students watch this episode. All ten said that they remember the most obvious reference was to pleasuring oneself. I didn't expect any black swans from this question, but I wanted to make sure. Similar to the first question, all 10 thought that the parts about sex to be entertaining and not educational in any way. For the last question, I found seven thinking it was realistic, three thinking it was not. My conclusion of this test was that comical situations involving sex are relatable and interesting, but not thought to be educational by any means. But what I have learned is that people are more likely to pay attention when they can relate to the subject matter in a positive way. So, now that I had compiled this information, formed a hypothesis, and using tests and surveys, I thought to myself, what's next? For senior year project, I did two things. I, re I researched the media's effect on teenagers' views of sex, and I wrote a movie. I wrote a 36-page script entitled B-Side Love. 63-page script. This is it. Uh, I had a screenshot of the four main characters in the movie Surround a Fire, but it didn't work. What I wanted to do was provide a piece of media that gave a different message than what I was seeing in other teen movies. This movie is about a boy, Max. He is in love with a girl. He thinks, uh, he thinks that the girl loves him, but he is sadly mistaken. He, the entire movie, he tries to get her to like him, but he fails in doing so. He gets angry, breaks all of his records, and then goes to a record store to buy new ones. There, he meets a new girl by chance, Carmen. Carmen also happens to be the, the, the name of his favorite opera. He goes home happy, finally has succeeded. I wanted to show themes of inner happiness and acceptance of what happens. My movie, however, was never finished. I succeeded in making the opening scene, but it was only a small fraction of my movie and was not relevant enough to the rest of my research. But I don't count this as a failure. I count it as a life experience in filmmaking. Um, I learned about a lot about organization and preparing a lot more in advance with actors who have time to act, especially because they were students. And I'm going to film school next year, and I have learned that it's not easy to make a movie. But I have not. But I've not. I'm not stopping there. I've already started to work on a new script. It's entitled Crude. And it's about a girl trying to find out, uh, trying to find, trying to discover what her sexuality is, and basically the people around her don't want her to change, and they try and stop her, and it's that story. Uh, and I plan on making it over the summer. I've already started working on the script, and I've already started casting, and I think it's going to be a great movie. Uh, thanks for listening to my presentation. I'm done. Thank you.
Q&A. And if any of you guys want to look at the script, you guys can. It's double-sided. Yes? So do you think that the responsibility is all in, do you think that the school should be changing how they present sexual education or whether it should be the media that's changing or like whether it's the responsibility of people's parents or like what do you propose should be really different? Well, it would be better if the media could change, but no one really has power over that except for people who make it. What I believe is that the school system should start talking about sex early on. Maybe not about human anatomy and safe sex, but the importance of acceptance and the importance of uh, pressure. Because I feel like one of the main reasons that uh, kids have sex at an early age or feel bad about themselves is because of the pressure of fellow students. And I believe that an emphasis of that needs to be more heavily taught and examined and uh, inserted early on in the you know, career of a student, like in elementary school even. And I also believe that it's the parents uh, who also need to talk about uh, sex with their children and not hide it as if it was a taboo and bad because hiding something, is, as I said earlier, is not going to help it go away. It's going to make the kids look elsewhere for this information and that could possibly be wrong or misinformed. Are you thinking that um, a different model would apply? For example, following on to her question, that maybe teachers in various subject matters would um, not shy away from the topic, but plan uh, some way in within the scope of their subject matter to introduce ideas of acceptance and um, you know, dealing with pressure, but not necessarily pertaining to sex, but then do you think that that would be a I think that would be amazing if they could do that. Um, because one thing that I've noticed is that in, mo in well, I only can speak for Newton North and my uh, career as a student, is that in, you know, in history you learn about history, in science you learn about science, except for the small sexual education courses. I think that they need to integrate, like, integrate personality into a lot more of the subjects. I think that instead of just teaching facts and opinions of scholars, they need to teach more about, more about acceptance and more about forming a personal opinion, not listening to someone else. Are we talking about forming personal opinions about how we're going to, to uh, behave in our relationships, or are we talking about Um, personal opinions uh, in terms of behaviors that we would be comfortable with in those sexual relationships. Because I, I, and I don't think I'm articulating that. You're talking about incorporating sexual education earlier right. in school as opposed to are we also talking about later? I think that, yes. If we're talking about sex itself, right. I don't know that that necessarily is something that would be earlier or much earlier than high school. But I think, and I agree completely, that continuing it through high school would be something we've been working on for a while. Well, I, a lot of the um, messages that don't, don't necessarily pertain to sex exactly in sexual education is acceptance and making, uh, thinking about your choices and making making the right choice um, and forming one's own opinion. I think that should be strongly implemented early on. I just don't, I think that, you know, uh, as a, you know, in kindergarten we learn about, you know, math and we learn about, you know, basic English and, you know, maps, but I just don't see enough, I don't see enough teaching about, you know, culture and more about opinions. They, you know, they treat kids as, units, as I said, instead of as individuals who need to form their own opinion and need to be told how to do that. 
you know? If, if no one tells them how to form an opinion, they will just pick the most appropriate opinion closest to them, either from their parents or from a television show they watch, and that will consume their mind. Maybe not as intense as I put it, but over time it could skew their views. For the first part, I looked at oh, I looked at a lot of books. I wanted to find out um, first of all what are people being taught, and I wanted to learn about the amount. I wanted to learn how TV in the first place can television movies can even affect us at all, and I found that. And I wanted to then find what are we? What are the messages that are being told? in you know, the, these pieces of media. And then I wanted to ask students themselves how they thought and what they thought personally. You know, not from like books or from professionals, but from my fellow students because you know, that's the real center of my, that's who I was trying to reach in my research was the kids, not, not the adults, you know, the people who are going through the problems that I talk about. Does that answer your question? I don't understand your question. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so Are you asking whether the... It sounds like you were trying to get uh, feedback from other students because right. of the people in your sphere. Right. And so you, you primarily did that by interviewing them or asking them questions? Yeah, I did that. And I, I, did, I did both, but I, for the like, primary research of actually finding concrete information, uh, I did interview them. Okay. And did you compile the, I was just curious if that was part of it, was compiling the answers and yeah. how many people think this and how many yeah. people decided this. Oh. Yeah. I believe so. And, and there were, que were questions about um, the, the Seinfeld media, the Seinfeld clip, and then about their sexuality and health class that they had taken, and then whether or not they would take it. Yeah, I also, I. If it was an option. Yeah. I also uh, I didn't I don't think I include that in the abstract, but uh, I I did some more studies that I didn't include in my presentation. Like um, for example, I asked uh, stuff about television. I asked, do you think that you are directly influenced by television? Uh, where do you get your sexual information from? And and can't remember the third question. Sorry. Understanding kind of the end piece of working on the film, yeah. your, your movie. Mm -hmm. Clearly, that's a passion for you. Yes. I'm going to go into, um, which is fantastic. Um, when you were starting to put together your script and thinking about this whole idea of the film, what was your goal as you kind of walked through from the, the kind of literature review, talking to your peers, pulling them, getting stats together? Um, thinking about the idea of sex education in schools and then what they're learning out there in 
the rest of the world? And then how does the movie piece fit into all of that? Okay. Just kind of sure. Me into that. So what I wanted to do for the movie was I wanted to present a, it's based on personal experience, mm -hmm. and I wanted to present something uh, this, that can be just a little bit more relatable uh, than, you know, a movie about, you know, condoms or a movie, you know, that is made by just someone that, that is, it's focused to them. I want to make something that is, that is about them, that other people can watch so they can know what's happening and not so what teenagers can watch to show what's funny or what's cool. You know, I was trying, in a sense, to actively not give a message about certain things and present themes and messages of like acceptance and stuff that I don't find, I just didn't find in uh, a lot of sexual education courses and in movies. So in some ways, this, the moving towards a movie is your way to try to pull together, in some ways, entertainment, but yeah. education. It's the, next, it's the next step. But really focusing on allowing the, the viewer to decide what to they make, want. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Where do you think you would go from here? Finish the movie? Um, well, I'm not going to finish the movie that I wrote. Um, I am going, I'm writing, I'm working on a new movie. Uh, I mentioned that it's called uh, Crude. It's about a girl and she 